Welcome, Matt Russell, to the A-Team Pro Squad. We're super excited to have you on the team and riding a speed freak in 2021. How are you feeling today? Good, good. Um, training starting to come along and uh, yeah, excited for uh, 2021 and to be on the A-Square uh, Speed Freak. <laughs> Awesome. Well, I'm going to give you a little introduction. You've had an extensive career in long course triathlons with some outstanding results. In 2018, you came in second in Ironman Chattanooga and third in both Ironman Montreblanc and Canada. In 2019, you came in third in Ironman Texas 70.3 and first in Ironman Lake Placid. And although 2020 was a bit of a dud for all of us, you did get to compete at Challenge Daytona in December. So... Beyond these achievements, tell us a bit about yourself and what you're passionate about. Um, <clears throat> well, I'm passionate about obviously uh, swim, bike, and run, um, and uh, you know that's that's one thing moving forward um, uh, is uh, you know I think everyone has uh, certain gifts in the world, and um, <clears throat> I think the ability that I can swim, bike, and run. At, at a decent clip at times and uh, continue to inspire others um, is certainly a passion of mine. And uh, really just to, um, really trying to encourage other others to, you know, reach your dreams and to inspire them to be their best. And, um, you know, life gets, a, uh, there's a lot of things that uh, get thrown at you such as like COVID-19, um, but really, um, silver lining through the whole thing is hopefully people can spend a little bit more time with family, which I have. Um, and, uh, you know, just concentrate on the things that you can do not like, Oh, I, I can't, um, do this because of COVID-19. I can't do this instead of getting frustrated, just, you know, focusing on, you know, the things that uh, bring joy in your life and the things that you can do. So, yeah. Yeah, I know I did a ton more open water swimming in 2020 than I've ever done, seeing as our pools were closed. Did you have to do much the same? <laughs> um, not too much. Thankfully, in Florida, things were open. Uh, but there was, for a couple of months in um, the end of, May, end, end of March, April, and May, I was in northern New York um, <clears throat> at my father's place, which was a great place to be because the nearest neighbor is a half mile away. Um, <laughs> And uh, so I could I could bike and run, but I wasn't swimming at all. But it was too cold to go swimming in in uh, open water then. But uh, so I was I wasn't able to swim a couple of months. But since the end of May, I've been in the pool. So uh, I was grateful to be being able to able to swim uh, most of the year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So tell us a bit about your journey to triathlon and what's kept you in the sport for so long. So I started out with a background in running. Um, my school, I went to a very small school, kindergarten through 12th grade. It only offered three sports, basketball, soccer, and baseball. Um, and in order for me to run, a couple of my buddies and I, we had to drive 20 minutes to another school because we had a merger program. So my um, sophomore well, actually, my junior and senior year, I ended up running all three seasons, um, cross country, indoor track, outdoor track. So I was kind of hooked on the endurance bug from there. And then <clears throat> moving to college, um, well, actually, even before college, uh, one of my friends had put on like a mini triathlon um, and there, they did that for like 10 years. And then there was one going, going to be happening in Lake Placid the like Monday night mini triathlon series uh, every Monday night for I think like six weeks or so. And um, some of my friends are like, hey, do you want to do it? So we all did it. And I was, I was, I don't know, maybe 18, 19 at the time. Uh, I think it was probably 18. And it was like a 400 meter swim, I think 10 or 12 mile bike, and then a 5k run. Well, I think I was literally the last person out of water because I didn't know how to swim. I doggy paddled. Um, and then got out, out of the water and had a decent bike and a decent run. And I think I won my age group. Obviously it wasn't that competitive, um, but I was like, this is pretty cool. I just need her to learn how to swim. And then that summer also volunteered at Ironman Lake Placid. And that really inspired me watching um, Ironman Lake Placid. Just my, my buddies, uh, two or three of my buddies from high school 
we slept in my van and in the morning we'd wake up and we volunteered and um, had a blast just watching um, Ironman Lake Placid and cheering people on to the finish. Uh, you know, having Mike Riley and, you know, obviously if you've ever had that experience, it's, it's a, it's a special one. I'm like, Oh, I want to do an Ironman one year. So I kind of got the bug then. Then my freshman year of college, I went to a two year school in New York called SUNY Delhi. I was determined to do triathlon. I joined the, I joined the swim team and the track team. And I was, and I was also cycling on, on, uh, on the, on the side. Um, so I remember I even bought a pair of rollers and I was in the dorm of the, the hall, hallway and trying to like study my, and people were like, what are you doing? You know, um, and in swim practices from eight to 10 at night. Uh, and the tough thing from that was, I think he was a very good coach at giving workouts, but not very good coach at actually teaching you how to swim. Because most people that are swimming collegiately, they already know how to swim. Um, and he was like, oh, you have, a, you have some strong legs. Just kick low, kick hard. Um, unfortunately, it felt like progressive drowning to me. And I, like, I was very persistent with it. But I'm like, oh, I guess I can't do it. You know, I went to try to swim practice. I even tried a couple of meets. And so kind of my triathlon journey kind of ended there for the longest time. Transferred to University of New Hampshire, did my own thing, ran some marathons. Um, uh, just for fun, joined the cycling team. And then I actually joined the track and field and cross country team and ended up doing well enough that I ended up getting a scholarship to run the last couple of years there. And then graduated with a master's degree in occupational therapy, moved out to Boulder, Colorado. And then I was living there for a couple of years working as an occupational therapist. And I was doing uh, duathlons professionally, just, just for fun on the side. And I won a couple of national titles um in duathlon and so i was like wow i'm pretty good at running and, and cycling um and then in 2000 and i think it was 2009 i took a leave of absence and kind of traveled the world and went to columbia south america for a few months with some cycling friends and just trained a lot i went to switzerland and and raced uh power man zofig and I, I did duathlon worlds and I don't know where it was that year, but I mean, I was traveling around a lot and then I didn't really want to go back to work. I, I wanted to learn how to swim. So I went back and to my father's house in Northern New York and tried learning how to swim. And I was like, I'm just going to get this down. And, and then in 2010, um, I did my first 70.3, which was Florida 70.3. I think I was the third or fourth amateur overall but I think you had to be top two to get your pro card so I had just missed it um I think my swim was like something like 40 something and a half Ironman <laughs> and then and then three weeks later I did Moose Man 70.3 in New Hampshire and I I had a 36 minute swim which was much better for me and I had a great bike and run. And I think I was actually top 10 overall. And there was a, even professionals there too. And I think I was like the first or second amateur. So I got my first, I got my pro card from that race. And then um, I did my first professional race and my first Ironman, which was Ironman Lake Placid. And that was also in 2010. So that's kind of how it all started. And um, so it's been quite the journey. And so I've been racing professionally now from triathlons for be my 12th year. Wow. You give us all hope. Those of us who did not grow up swimming in the pool, for sure. I mean, it, it's really, it's really fun to hear from you, from professionals and that you guys go through some of the same struggles we do, because from an outsider's point of view, we just watch you guys in awe and think, oh, they just must have swam growing up and top cyclist and top runner. And um, it's pretty cool to hear that your story wasn't just like, oh yeah, I've always been good at this. I had to work hard at it. <laughs> yeah, no, that's for sure. I, I still, I feel like everything, you always have to kind of work hard at it. And, you know, I think the main message is I failed a lot, but there's either two ways to come away from it. Um, it's either gonna, you know, really bug you and get you down and you get frustrated and not do it, or to say, hey, this is a learning experience. I'm gonna grow from this and become better from it. And if you can take that, that second one message, what I just said, and just learn and grow from it, it's amazing what you can accomplish. And, and 
I'm still trying to learn and grow and uh, also fail too, because that's when you grow the most. And um, yeah, th in this day and age, it's uh, really any day and age. That's, I think, what, what the secret um, recipe for success is. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, a big part of your triathlon story was actually the horrible crash that you had in Kona in October 2017. Can you tell us about that and your subsequent comeback? Yeah, um, I don't really remember a whole lot about the accident itself, which is probably a blessing. Um, I don't think anyone really wants to remember too much of that. But long story short, I was going 35 miles per hour on the Queen K right around mile 87 at an intersection that was supposed to be managed. Um, you know, long story short, it was mismanaged and a uh, vehicle pulled out in front of me. Like I said, I was going 35 miles per hour, head first in the side of the windshield. And I severed my sternocostal mitis muscle, my neck muscle, my um, external jugular, and my internal jugular was actually exposed and right there, but thankfully it wasn't nicked. If it was, I wouldn't be here um, as it was. Um, thankfully, there was an anesthesiologist doctor there watching, spectating, and he actually came over to me and applied the right amount of pressure on me um, to, to stop uh, the profusive bleeding. Um, and I guess I, I, I was trying to get up and continue to race. Um, I was, I guess, in shock and really didn't know what was going on. Um, and thankfully, there was an ambulance not too far away. Um, I went to the hospital and they hooked me up in the IV. And thankfully, my body was started reproducing red blood cells right away. Um, and then when I was in the hospital, <clears throat> my wife and my father were there. Uh, my son was only three months at the, at the time, um, and I was kind of unconscious for a little bit. And then when I came to, I kept on asking the same questions over and over and over, like the same four or five questions over and over and over for like a couple hours. Um, like, what happened? Um, am I going to be okay? Did I, was it my fault? Um, did I, did anyone else get hurt? And then I would always follow up that with like, I love you with my, to my wife. And that was the same thing for like multiple hours. Um, I remember getting out of the bed and just walking down the hallway and I was so out of breath just because I had no blood. Um, but I just wanted to move the body. I think I was only in the hospital for a few days, thankfully. Um, and, you know, thankfully I didn't break you know, thankful, well, one, I'm still here. Two, that the concussion wasn't so bad that, you know, I didn't have permanent brain damage. Um, another thing that I wasn't paralyzed, I didn't break any bones. Um, and just really a lot of unknowns at the time. And uh, had stitches right under my eye and actually had a stitch right next to my eye so I could have even lost my vision. Um, and then throughout the whole process, um, I, I think I pulled out three, three pieces of glass from my neck. Um, I still actually have a piece of glass in my neck. Um, it's, uh, there's been a lot of uh, hard times through the whole thing. I mean, just with imbalances, starting up and doing my first Ironman, which is Ironman Texas, I had a walk for the first time. But really, I was just grateful to be out there, and um, but uh, definitely had some imbalances from the accident. Um, I mean, I remember my first run back, pushing my son in the stroller, and just tears rolling down my face, just because I was just thankful to be alive. Um, and I think a lot of people might have retired um, and just kind of said, "I'm done with triathlon," but. Thankfully, my wife was still on board and I still had the passion and I still wanted to uh, do, see if I could get back. And it was quite the journey. So my, like I said, my first Ironman was Ironman Texas, which I had to end up walking just because I had um, pain on the opposite side of my accident just because it was 
you know, the antagonist side was working overtime just because I don't have a neck muscle on my, my right side where the accident was. Um, and then throughout the year, it got a little bit better because I was doing rehab and stretching and exercises. Uh, I think my next full Ironman was Ironman Canada. And I finished third there when I was ecstatic about that race. And then I think a month later, I did Ironman um, Mount Tremblant. I finished third there. And also, I was ecstatic. And Mike Riley called me uh, across the line. He's like, he, He's like, if you get top three, you'll be able to go to Kona. And he's like, you're going back to Kona. And I was like, great, you know, um, excited. And then found out after that it was the last qualifying race. And I was actually the next person in line to actually not make it. So I actually missed it. So I didn't get to Kona. I'm like, I didn't get a slot to Kona. I'm like, oh, it is what it is. You know, that wasn't my goal. And I was just thankful to be racing. And then driving down from... Mount Tremblant to Florida, where I was living at the time, Mike Riley, not Mike Riley, um, Andrew Mesnick gave me a call and said, do you want to, um, he's like, go back to Kona. I was like, I feel like with everything that you've done and the year that you've had, you deserve a spot um, to get back to the starting line again. And I said, I said, first I said, let me talk to my family, like, let me talk to my wife and family make sure they're on board. And I talked to them and then called, um, sent him an a email later on and said, yes, I would like to. So I was going back to Kona. Um, and then <clears throat> two weeks before Kona, um, I raced Ironman Chattanooga. And I think most people are like, why would you ever do that? But for me, I'm the type of person that I actually race really well doing Ironmans back to back. And I know my body. Um, and so that's, that's what I did. And I had a great race to Ironman Chattanooga finished second. And then, um, two weeks, then flew right to Kona, spent about a week there training. And then, uh, my goals were really just to finish what I wasn't able to start the year before and just crossing that finish line, no matter what place I was in was going to be a victory for me. Uh, and I, I think I shocked myself and everyone else. I finished six in the world that day. I had um, a great swim, bike and run, put it all together and finished six in the world and finished in the time of 8.04, which was, I think, the, which was the ninth fastest time ever completed there. And um, I, I think, you know, just, uh, I mean, when I crossed that finish line, I had definitely had a lot of emotions um, and threw my hands up in, in the to the sky and I was just thanking the Lord that I'm still alive, that I'm still here and um, never felt so more so alive. And, um, you know, I hope, I think that inspired everyone and I hope it inspired everyone just to say like, hey, you can come back from lots of hard times. And if you put your mind to it, miracles can happen. I mean, the, it's a miracle one that I'm here and it's another miracle, miracle that I was able to, you know, race again at Kona and not, let alone finish in the top 10. So, Really, um, it's just taking one day at a time, doing your best and um, belie believing in yourself and lots of recipes for success. But really, um, it's about having a good balance with, you know, family, good, being a good place in life. And um, it's, uh, it's, it's been, like I said, quite a journey. And my journey is uh, certainly far from over. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Do you think going into 2018, I imagine you didn't have like expectations on where you were going to place? Like you said, many times you were going into a race, just being grateful to be able to toe the line. Do you think that helped you in your racing or did you ever race at a time where you like, I expect to finish in the top three and I'll be disappointed if I don't? No, you know, I'm, I'm not a type of person that I really put too much pressure on myself. Like I just get out there and try to do my best. Um, and that's kind of been my frame of mind for, a, for the longest time, but I'm sort of trying, trying to change that now, now that every time that I get up to the starting line that I'm going to try to like, Hey, I want to win this race. Um, so I'm trying to change my frame of mind. I'm still going to try my best, whether I win or I'm third place, fifth place or 10th place, I'll, I'll still try my best, but, um, I try not to put too much pressure on myself. Uh, but I think moving forward, I am going to try to 
um, build more confidence that like, hey, I can win this thing. So that's what I'm trying to bring forward for 2021. Nice. It is. I think it's always a balance. Like sometimes you can psych yourself out if you have too high expectations and get yourself down too early in the race. But at the same time, you have to have that competitive spirit to go after it. Right. <laughs> for sure. For sure. Well, you did race Challenge Daytona in December, and I saw you giving Gustav Eden some words of encouragement as he was going down that finishing shoot. So what was going on there? Tell us about your Challenge Daytona experience. Yeah. Um, the day didn't start out like I wanted to. Uh, like Ironman Florida, which was about a month before the race, I had the swim, uh, swim of my life, and I got up with a lead group, which is awesome. Um, unfortunately, uh, I mean, like, Challenge, Challenge Daytona PTO World Championships. It was like the strongest field that I've ever been in for a caliber of like all caliber of races. Like, because there's so many ITU athletes. And with that said, ITU athletes go out so, so fast. And, um, you know, I, I just didn't have a good swim start. And you cannot have a, I mean, if you can, you cannot have any flaw in the swim. Otherwise, you know, you're off the back. And that's kind of what happened to me. So my day didn't start off the greatest. Um, but, you know, I was like, hey, I'm still going to do the best I can. Um, and thankfully, it was a, it was a race that um, no matter what place you finish, <clears throat> you still got a prize check, a, a, a prize purse at the end of the day, which is, which is awesome. I'm going to do my best. And there was lots of other people like Ben Hoffman didn't have a great day out there. Sebastian Keenly didn't have a great day. Um, Alistair Brownlee didn't have a great day, um, out there. And I'm just going to like, Hey, I'm just going to do my best. And on the bike, I had a pretty solid bike for me. And that was my first time racing on, um, the speed freak, the AT speed freak. And I averaged 330 Watts for 50 miles and I felt pretty good on it and got off the bike and didn't have the greatest run, but I was like, going to do my best. And, um, and then literally it was my last lap. And uh, Gustav Eden was like literally finishing. He had another 200 to 100 meters to finish and he was coming up on me and I just moved way over and I just was che cheering him on, you know, um, I could see, I knew he was the winner and, you know, I just said, you know, congratulations, you got this and like awesome race. Um, and uh, I mean, that's, a, that's the least I can do um, and try to have a little bit of fun with it when, uh, you know, I'm not necessarily having the greatest race, but he's having the greatest race. And um, I've been there when I've had great races and I definitely appreciate when someone uh, cheers me on. So I know how that feels. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the most beautiful things about triathlon is we do cheer each other on, um, you know, even though it's a competitive sport, we all know what it feels like to be out there and to see someone doing well. You just got to give them a high five and tell them good job. So what was it like riding on that track? And, um, you know, in particular, you said you averaged 330 on the Speed Freak. What was your favorite thing about riding the Speed Freak that day? Um, well, the, the, I'll, I'll, it's, been, it's been said multiple times before. That bike course, my, it, it's fast, but it's actually tough just because you have to be in aero position the whole time. And, um, it's, it's tough, especially for, I think, I think a lot of people thought the ITU athletes were going to do better than what they did. And a lot of them actually didn't do that well. And it's because of that bike was so hard and you really have no relief to get out of it, um, uh, out of aero position. Um, and I mean, I obviously did just a little bit just to stretch the back and whatever, but, uh, I mean, I felt pretty comfortable on speed freak and, um, uh, which is, which is awesome considering I think I only got the bike like two weeks before um so it was a kind of a very I was like the quickest turnaround for me ever to get a bike and race on it but the fact that my body was able to adjust to it right away on on a on a course that's really challenging for um for anyone to be in the aero position for that long so the fact that my body felt pretty good on it in a short amount of time was awesome and now I, it feels like I feel so dialed in just because I feel like whenever you get a bike, it takes a little bit of time for your body get, to get adjusted to it. But, but the fact that I, I rode um, that well um, 
in, you know, just getting the bike from that short amount of time, it's, it pretty much says that, uh, speaks for itself right there. So mm-hmm. it's, it's comfortable. Um, it's fast and I'm excited to, uh, um, do a lot more races on it, um, this coming year and hopefully posting some, uh, fastest spike split on it too. Nice. Yeah. What are your plans for 2021? Can you fill us in? Yeah. Uh, typically I like to race a lot of full Ironmans, like six to seven a year. Um, so my, my first full Ironman will be Ironman Texas, um, which is at the end of April. And then, um, St. George 70.3, which is North American championships is in early May. Um, and just cause it's my hometown race, literally like right here, like about 20 feet, people will be riding by on the road right here. So the, the, the course is like literally in my back backyard, which is awesome. So I'll be hopping in and doing that. Um, I'll be doing Ironman Tulsa. Um, which is North America Championships. I believe that's at the end of May. Um, and then Ironman Lake Placid, which I'll be defending my title because they didn't have it last year in 2020. Uh, and then Ironman Mount Um, And that's all that they have up for right now. Um, they have a couple other 70.3s up. But um, I, I might do a, like I might do a couple. We'll, we'll see. We'll see once they release the rest of the the schedule. Um, but uh, I'm also looking forward to Ironman World Championship seventy point three is in Saint George too. So that's going to be um, pretty awesome too. And like I said, the course is my uh, backyard right here. So. Um, yeah, it should, it should be it should be an exciting year. Yeah, it sounds packed, and it's so cool. You're right on that St. George course. I, um, yeah, it, it sounds like an exciting year, and um, I'll definitely be tracking you at Lake Placid because that will be my first full Ironman, which was supposed to be 2020, but you know. So I'll be excited to have you on the tracker. You'll be finished hours ahead of me, and then I'll see how you did to defend your title. So that's awesome. How do you, how do we follow you online? We'll be interviewing you here on a squared, but how do people follow you as an athlete? Um, on Instagram at, uh, Matt Russell, try, um, <clears throat> I mean, I also have a Facebook fan page, Matt Russell, professional triathlete. Um, and then also my website, Matt Russell, try.com. Um, but, uh, yeah, pretty, pretty active on, um, Instagram and, and, uh, and Facebook. So those are the, the main, the main media platforms. Nice. Well, I appreciate you being with us today. Um, do you have any closing thoughts before we wrap it up? No, no. Looking forward for 2021. Um, you know, 2021 should look a little bit better than, uh, 2020, um, 2020, we're able to get a couple races at the end of the year. Uh, so, um, I mean, this is kind of the, the new normal, um, but, uh, yeah, I, I think, uh, definitely the back half of the year, um, uh, things will hopefully be back to more, more normal. Um, and I'm definitely looking forward to racing, racing again. I think, um, in 2020, it made me miss it a little bit, but, uh, you know, now that it's in 2021, I'm actually more hungry for this year, which is a good thing. Um, sometimes, uh, like I said, in the past, like in the past, like you need to take a step back or t- take one or two steps back before you can take a few steps forward. Um, and I feel like, uh, hopefully everyone felt like 2020 was a couple of steps back so they can ramp it up a little bit in 2021. So looking forward for, uh, this year. Yeah, I think it'll be you know, best wishes for 2021 for all of us. And it'll be really interesting to get back out there racing and see, I think we'll all step out there with a new sense of gratitude for sure. I know I've missed it. So it'll be great following you and your career and following you on the speed freak. And uh, we look forward to catching up with you again in the future. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you, Matt. Thanks.